Hey everyone, Sam here from Barn2 with an in-depth tutorial about our Document Library Pro plugins, settings, and features. In this video, I'll be discussing how to change the layout for displaying documents, including a detailed look at some handy shortcodes that give you a bunch of extra options. This is a tutorial specifically about Document Library Pro. If you haven't already done so, you can get yourself a copy of the plugin using the first link in the description. Then use the Upload Plugin option in WordPress to install and activate the plugin. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to be discussing the different layout options that this plugin provides. So I'll start off by just demonstrating what each one looks like on our plugin demo page, which you can find linked below. First up, we have the table view. This is the most standard and straightforward way of listing all of your documents, and it also presents an easy opportunity for people to download multiple different files at once, and they can also preview the documents in the library itself. Up next, we have the grid with images option, and this is a grid format, so you could have three or four or maybe five different columns across, and then as many as you need down. This would be ideal for libraries with probably less than 100 documents in total, as it's a little bit less straightforward to navigate, it does come with a search bar, but there are no category or tag filters that you can add. However, it does look very nice on anyone's website, and it comes with the download feature as well. Similarly, you can create a grid with icons. This is a simple change in the settings from the grid with images. And finally, both views can be arranged using this folder view. So you can see it's similar to the folders on your computer. When you open it up, it can either open into the table layout or it can open into the grid layout, as I mentioned a moment ago. This is simply another way of displaying the table, but all of the core features are the same once you open up an individual folder. Now let's take a look at the plugin settings page and see how we can switch between these different views. You can find this page by going to Documents, which is created by the plugin, and clicking on Settings over on the left-hand side here. Once you're here, you can scroll down to Document Lists, and you see this Default Layout option. You can switch that between Table and Grid, and that will give you either the Table Layout, like this one here, or the Grid Layout, like this one here. And these can be further customized once you have selected whichever one you want. For example, if you scroll back to the top of the settings page, you'll see these different tabs, including document tables. So if you selected the table format, you can now modify the specific content that goes into the table, beginning with the columns, which you can read more about on our knowledge base. And you can modify things like the image size and how the links within the table are going to function. Next, I wanna show you how to enable this folder view, which I showed you in the demo. Simply scroll down to below the layout option and you'll find folders. And you can click the box here to enable them in the first place. And then you can also modify how they're going to be sorted. Now they can be sorted by name or in the order that you select here using the category order or menu order or any of these other options. And then by default, you can set them to be closed, which would look a little something like this. Here, they're all closed. Or you could set them to be open. But you have a third option, and that is custom. And then you can choose which of the folders will be open. And in this case, that's based on the category. Now, I have some categories already set up, one of them being resources. And you'll just write the lowercase version of the name of that category. And if you want to include multiple categories, you would just add a comma, space, and write the next category. And you can do that for as many as you'd like. Now save changes. And let's see how that's impacted our library. Now you can see that they're all sorted by name from finance all the way down to resources, but resources is open by default, while the rest of them are closed by default based on the settings that we created. If you would like to show only some categories of documents or hide certain categories of documents uh, out of the entire list, there is a way to do that, but we're going to use a short code instead. So we're going to actually edit the page for document library here. And you can see document library has added this short code 
in order to add the library to this default page. We can actually modify this short code. What we're going to do is press the spacebar, and I'm going to write a little extra short code here, doc underscore category, and then write equals and open quotation marks. Then you can write the name of the category, for example, resources, close the quotation marks. And this is going to include only the resources category. So when I click update, let's now view that page. And we're only seeing the resources category, which is also open by default based on the settings that we had earlier. Now, if we would like to hide the resources category, we can actually modify it once again. And we can write the word exclude underscore document category and then list the category that we want to exclude. If you have multiple categories, you'll just add a comma and then write the next one immediately without any spaces. In this case, I'm just gonna show you one and then click update. And you can see all of our other categories are listed here except for resources. So that's a way that you can include or exclude certain categories as you wish. If you need to remove the customization, just remove the extra short code area here until it looks simple again like this. Now, just to let you follow along, I'm going to disable folders one more time, and I'm going to actually change the layout to a more custom layout. So first of all, I'm going to save changes and refresh the table so you can see it again. Now, first customization I want to make is this search bar. I can include or exclude it, and I can also include some filters up here at the top of the table. So let's see where, that, where those settings are. Scroll all the way down until you find search, and you can find this option here, and you can either hide it, which is useful in some cases, or you can place it above the library or in both locations above and below. You can also choose to show that reset button, which will help people to reset the search simply. I would always have that enabled. Now scroll all the way up and find document tables. This is how you add the filters. Scroll down to document library controls and choose search filters. You can either show based on columns in the table or you can choose custom. And in this case, I've written the custom filters for document underscore categories and doc underscore tags. And then you can save those changes. And now you can see the categories showing up here on the left, on the top, and the tags as well. One more option I'll mention is the image size. In the table layout, you have some image size options. You can either leave the default 70 by 70 pixels, or you can enter your own value or you can have it at any standard WordPress image size, such as thumbnail, medium, or large. If you change this to medium, for example, save changes, and then we refresh. Now our images will load at a larger size, or you can set a specific pixel ratio, such as 70 by 70 or 50 by 50, something like that. Now, I also want to direct your attention to our knowledge base for this mobile visibility and responsive options page. Suffice to say, there's a lot of different options that are available, but if you want to prioritize certain columns within your table so that they will show up in the mobile friendly version, then you can do that. But you will have to add something to your shortcode like priorities equals whatever your columns are. In this case, they're using the example one, three, and two. So it's possible to get a table that looks good on desktop as well as mobile, but you'll have to read around and check some of those options as I don't really have time to go into each one of them in this video. The final design and layout option I want to cover is that of the custom option here. If you switch between default and custom, you now have the option to select specific colors for your borders, as well as the colors of your header text, main background color, alternating background color, and body text. And you can choose the spacing option here. For example, compact, normal, or spacious, or you can leave it on your theme default. 
Now, if you have a popular theme installed, the table will definitely be compatible with it. So having the theme default is never really going to be a bad option. But hey, at least you can edit the width and color of the different borders. Let's see how that compares to our current table. I'm going to hit Save Changes. And at the moment, you can see what our document library looks like with the gray and black colors. And then I'm going to refresh. And now we've changed the table to have these outline borders with different border widths. You can see it's slightly wider on the edge than it is in the middle. And we have alternating background colors, as well as we've changed the text at the top of the table to be white with a darker color background. This is going to take a little bit of tweaking to get it perfect, but at least you have these options. You have some options as well in the document grid option. You can select the background color and the category background color as well, but the options are not quite as extensive as the table layout. In any case, I hope this tutorial helped you out today. If it did, I'd appreciate you supporting our work on this channel by giving this video a like. Thanks so much. And if you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial about how to set up Document Library Pro on your site, you can check out this video next. And as always, thanks for watching.